Okay, well, Terry, um, standards gone up again. Cracking game from the sideline. How's it from the coaches dug out? I look um, extremely pleased and, you know, I think um, you now we're improving every week and I can't ask for any more from the players and to have a big crowd here tonight to witness a game like that and just show where we're at um, with what we're doing. You know, I'm extremely pleased and very, very proud of the boys. Significant difference from the sideline seemed to be the pace of the game. It was it was unrelenting, really. Look, um, it was, and and you know when I looked at the way we trained on Tuesday and Wednesday, how we trained on Wednesdays, how we've just played tonight, and, and that's what we've been working on for a long time. So, you know, the credit's got to go to the boys, and as I've said before, they're sticking to a you know a regime here where you know we're putting pressure on them to perform and to improve, and and the boys are stepping the gears up every week, and and look, that's exactly what we've said from the start, and uh, and and that's what we're getting from the players, and you know the, the, that's showing out here tonight. Now look at two areas defensively in the first two games. Forgive me, Corey. A few goals were shipped tonight, very tight, and it took a cracking goal to breach it. Oh, look, and that's right, and that's an area that you know we've tried now three right backs, and uh, and we're trying to develop players at, at that position, and and you know and um, and we brought uh, Alex Henderson in from strikers only four or five weeks ago, and. You know, no disrespect to what he's been doing there, but you know what they're doing over there is completely different to what they're doing here, and it's taken him four or five weeks to be able to understand on how we want to play. And you know, the move tonight of Chris Matiki out to to right back and Hendo came into centre half, and the pairing with Corey and Michael Zapone, who was a midfielder that we've turned into a left back. You know, tonight really worked for us. But once again, the credit goes to the boys because we identified that problem. We've worked on that problem all week, and the back four. Uh, and the midfield in front of them and our goalkeeper you know, did their jobs tonight and they were very, very good. Looking up front, Jared Austin said in midweek he was a bit disappointed he hadn't got on the score sheet yet. Well, he did it tonight with a great header and um, he could have had several, couldn't he? Yeah, look, I'm, uh, I'm glad he said that because uh, in the change room before the game, that's exactly what I said to him in front of the players and there's no misunderstanding. Now, Jared was told that his positioning hasn't been where we want him to be and he's not getting into those areas to create opportunities for himself, whether it be you know in the 18 yard box with his head or first time or, or whatever, and he's under pressure. And as I've reminded him tonight, we've got 35, 40 players here doing very, very well. And I've got boys in the under 20 scoring goals every week. So tonight he's stepped up and he's done exactly what all the other boys have done. He knows he's under pressure to keep his spot and he's done his job and we've asked him to score goals and he's, and he's got in the right position and he's done that tonight. So it's a great rap for him and hopefully he keeps improve as well. I'm going to steal Corey's line here. Corey said beforehand that uh, the Brisbane Raw might be the benchmark that you set yourself against this season. If that's the case, more than met the, uh, the challenge tonight. They are the benchmark. And you know, while we talk about um, you know, our Malaysian friends that played here last week, they've got four or five boys to arrive here in the country yet, I believe as well. And so they're going to be a massive handful through the year. But there's no misunderstanding in what we talked about in our change room tonight. Our respect for the Brisbane Raw as a club and what they've done in Australia is immense. And there's no misunderstanding. But when they come here to our club, that's another football team. And if we're going to be in the top tiers of the NPL this year, we need to compete and we need to get points and results against uh, you know, opposition like the Raw. Their first five minutes out there was absolutely pristine. You can't say that that uh, first five minutes um, for me, if they had played like that for 90 minutes, well, you'd be sitting back, you know, you'd be looking at Barcelona type of stuff. They were absolutely superb. And I thought that as the game went on, uh, the momentum started to change and we certainly matched them. And at the end of the day, uh, the, re the result won all was totally fair. And, um, and our amateur players, semi-professional players, whatever you want to call them, have done extremely well tonight against, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the leading team in this country. And we've matched them uh, in, you know, in all areas. Corey, moving across to you, Terry, I might have to lean across you here. Um, you've got a few scars on you. Um, you look as though you could do with a, a beer or at least a good drink. Have you played against the intensity and, uh, and the speed of that sort of team before? Um, yeah, obviously not. Like we're all, I've only just come into the comp competition this year, and as we said before, they're the benchmark, and they're a lot more intense than what a lot of a lot of other teams that are training two to three nights a week. They're they're in every night with each other for what 12 months now. So no, we haven't really played that played that intensity before. But I think we match them. Like Terry, Terry and Dom have been conditioning to us conditioning for us at training to match that standard and I think the boys held their own tonight and yeah, it was very pleasing. 
How did you find it? What was the, the biggest challenge for you out there? Was it their movement? Was it their speed? What was it? Uh, it's, just, it's just them knowing where each other are at all times. Like, we're, we're starting to build the relationship between each other where we're getting up to that standard where we don't have to yell at someone to get into a position they know to go there. So that's the, that's the sort of thing that we sort of have to get to to sort of, sort of move on and beat those kind of teams. Defensively, how's it coming together? We spoke to Mario last week. He said very easy club to slot into. The the only one goal against tonight. You're going to celebrate that, but uh, obviously it's clean sheets you're looking for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. That's what every centre half and defender should be looking for, and goalkeepers is clean sheets. Like we're never happy until it's a clean sheet and we've got three points on the board. But all the boys in the defence have been working hard. A lot of the twenties who've been playing well and the reserve teams have really been pushing us to become better players. With them having good results every week. And it's just, well, every, all the, all the back line's been working hard. And it's shown, it's shown tonight. I know we conceded one goal, but that's just a lapse of concentration that we've got to work on. Put you on the spot now. Mark's out of 10. What, the team or? For the team. Uh, I think tonight we're about six, seven out of 10. We've got a lot of areas to improve in. A lot of sort of, I don't know, being clinical and being, as Terry says, ruthless with a lot of things we do. And just that lapse of concentration, we have it sort of towards the end of second, uh, towards the end of half, and sort of as soon as they score. So I think there's a lot to improve on there, but we've got a long season and we just seem to be going forward and forward every game. So we'll get there. We'll get there. It's been a great night. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Jeff, Morton Bay United, delighted with the point. Um, cracking close game. How is it from the Raw dugout? Yeah, look, it was, a, it was an interesting game, actually. Um, it was a very tough game. Played at a really high intensity, high pace. And we, we got a lot out of the game. The goal you scored was one of the best ones we've seen down here for a couple of seasons. There, the speed and the cross and the finish. That's the sort of level that you're, you're working at, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, that, um, that switch of play. Um, uh, we got a good movement in the wide areas. Uh, got, a, got a wide player in behind the fullback and then a great cross and a, and a fantastic finish so that's that's the type of thing that we're type of play that we're trying to to build and uh, yeah it unfortunately didn't happen as much as we hoped today well yeah you got eight last week and, and one this week but um, what do you take out of it I Jets are uh, pretty happy with the way they've come away with the point in their performance yeah I thought um, I thought we defended really well I've, uh, with uh, with Royce up front and uh, the, uh, the, the attacking threats that uh, the Jets had, uh, I thought the, uh, the way that our young lads defended at the back was, uh, was, was very, uh, uh, very, very pleasing. Uh, our midfield as well, we'd, we'd worked a fair bit this week on, on our defensive structure and it, it, held, it held quite well. So uh, from that point of view, uh, I was very happy. Um, I was probably a little bit disappointed in the second half that we, we got caught up in the, in the pace of the game. and. I would have liked our players to become just be a little bit more composed on the ball there through the second half. But it's a learning curve, which is what the NPL is all about for a lot of players in every team, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And uh, you know, that's that's what we try and try and tell the players that every game is a little bit different here. Uh, we're getting different uh, challenges than we get to playing in the uh, National Youth League. There's. Uh, uh, different styles of play there's some good some good sort of journeyman pros playing in the league as well so uh, they can there's a lot for them to pick up and uh, I say we're really pleased to be uh, to be playing in the league um, Jeff how you've only had two games we know but already people are talking about the Brisbane Royal team being the benchmark for this league does that add pressure to you or do you not pay any attention to that kind of talk no not not really we're but we're we're just here to to develop our players for another six months of the year, um, I say we're we're really pleased with the uh, the standard of the of the competition. Um, we're getting we're getting different challenges every week, um, and uh, look, uh, if people want to say that, I'll, we'll take it as a compliment. But we're <laughs> we're uh, you know it's it's about individual development, not not even winning games for us. So um, performance before uh, before results. Put you on the spot here. A quick analysis of the Morton Bay United team. Oh look, um, I, I was quite impressed with them actually. They um, they look like they've um, they've changed their style of play this year. They're playing a lot a lot more football. Um, they're uh, they, they caused us a few problems, especially in the in the second half. Um, and uh, I think they'll they'll get better and better as as, uh, as time goes on. Um, and and we're, we're I think we we understand that as a team that uh, 
Uh, for these teams, it's early, early in the season for them. We've come off a, off a full season, so we're, we're fully match fit and ready to go. So, I think. Uh, Fitness-wise, um, teams will improve week on week in, week out, and uh, things will get a little bit tougher for us uh, as the weeks go on. Well, Jeff, we look forward to seeing you a bit later in the season. Thank you. Great, thanks.